I'm walking, 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 I'm walking. Some people say walking takes too long. But I say we're walking, you can't go wrong, no. Why should you rush your way through life? Oh, you won't get very far running all the time. Shalom, body of Christ, my brothers and sisters, peace, blessings, and glory to the Most High Father. Yeshaya HaMashiach, our Savior and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place right now. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you grant us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, that you come in and that you pour upon us the seven spirits of Ahia, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of might, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of Ahia, and the spirit of the fear of Ahia, and that everything that my brothers and sisters may hear, receive, understand not understand i pray that they take it directly to the father that you will grant them the discernment that they need to know that this is truth this is heavenly this is divine with the key of david we bind we cast out we expel and rebuke every unclean spirit every spirit that is of the enemy we bind satan and his minions and the ruler spirits the principalities the spirit your wickedness in high places the rulers of the darkness of this world we cast them down with the key of david we place a cloak of invisibility over this recording over every one of my brothers and sisters in christ who may come across this video i place a hedge of protection over you and i cover you in the spirit of the most high father with the blood of the lamb you are covered with pillars of fire surrounded by the fire from father's throne and father make our foreheads like flint against the enemy father so that he cannot come in and cause division, doubt, strife, hesitation within ourselves, Heavenly Father. Help us to understand the urgency of knowing the kingdom within, Heavenly Father. Please let the seeds take root, Heavenly Father. Please let your children have open hearts, minds, bodies, and spirits to receive of you, Heavenly Father. Let them be as houses with no roof that you can fill to a capacity which has no end, Father. May the glory of Yah shine through this mana. May it radiate. May it gleam. May it bring you glory to your holy name, Father. May it bring light to the darkness of those who don't understand what it means to know yourself. May it bring joy to those, Heavenly Father, who understand that there is more to to understand about their bodies heavenly father to understand about your word and how you have told us that we are written in the books and the books are written in us how you have told us heavenly father that the word is encoded in our bodies and how you have shown us here father that the locations in the bible are in our body they are stamped they are they are therefore a sign heavenly father that the kingdom is truly within that you have written it upon us and that it will not depart from us because we are, Heavenly Father, your kingdom on earth, and you are establishing your kingdom reign. The, word, the, the prayer says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is already here. The kingdom is here. Father Haya, I pray that you grant them a mighty wind and a rush of revelation from the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh Chokman. Holy Spirit, you're very welcome here. Set the atmosphere for learning. Set the atmosphere here for teaching. Set the atmosphere here for discernment and understanding. This is my prayer. May their hearts be filled with joy. And may they well up with joy, just as I do every time we get ready to learn more father about what you have revealed to us i give you all the glory and i cast everything out that is not of you no negativity can come to this place heavenly father we close the door seal it shut with the blood of the lamb and this is my prayer in christ Yeshua's holy name amen and amen hello shalom my brothers and sisters in christ family friends loved ones body of christ I pray you're so very blessed and welcome back to Beloved Grace Ministries. And I am Queen Esther. I'm your sister in Christ. And I pray you're very blessed today. 
I'm so excited to be back. This is part three. We still talking about the cerebellum, but we're moving more into the intricate work of this mana. We're going to talk about Joshua leading the Israelites into the promised land and them crossing over today. Space, time, measure, thought. There's so many things that we are going to cover. We are literally walking this thing out one at a time. <laughs> this is why. Because we have to. It's so much mana. Our plate is so full with things that Father has revealed to us about the kingdom we're in. It's one step at a time as we're putting these things together to make it presentable to illustrate the things that are being shown to us from heaven so that you can get a visual, so we all can get a visual of what Father is telling us, y'all. This is amazing. Oh my goodness. Praise the most high Father. I'm always excited about this. Y'all just have to understand, like, when I get excited, when I get giddy, it's because I know that no man, nobody, nobody can make this up, okay? And these things come from the Father in heaven because he is establishing the truth of the kingdom within, he is, is he is he is conveying the importance and the urgency of knowing the truth about the kingdom within because you have to know yourself. If you don't know yourself, you truly do live in poverty. This is from the Gospel of Thomas. I've repeated this over and over because Father always has me repeat it because it, the more you understand what that means the more important it's going to be to you to take care of your body in every facet, form, shape, way, or manner, okay? In mind, body, spirit, and heart. Because it says when you know yourself, you will understand that you are sons of the living father. But if you don't know yourself, you live in poverty because you have no idea what is going on in the spirit realm and the depths and the height and the breadth thereof of the things that are taking place in the spirit. You don't know what he's doing within you. You don't know what he placed in you, inside of you. It makes me excited because when you understand what your body really is, when you understand what your how powerful the mind really is, and when you understand how connected we truly are to the Father, that he literally lives in us. Holy Ashaya literally, literally lives in us and that he binds everything in us. When I say bind, he holds. Everything is held together by Holy Ashaya. Everything is bound together by Holy Ashaya within the body. We're going to get more into that later in other videos. And you have to be open to what he's doing. To be able to deliver, to first of all, to partake in this, to receive it, it is a gift in itself. And it gives me great joy every single time he is revealing the kingdom within. He told us in the book of Daniel that the books were shut up for an appointed time. But at the appointed time, knowledge would be released, y'all. This is the time. I'm going to put the disclaimer out there right now. As we go forward, these messages are going to get heavier. It's going to get heavier for those who doubt. It's exciting for those who understand because you can see Father's hand all in this. The Holy Spirit is very, very present. There's no denying it. But it's going to get heavy and you must have undeniable faith and belief. And above all things, this is the disclaimer. Take everything spoken heard seen to the most high father he will confirm for you but you have to be patient if you have a speckle of doubt we can't go to him to prove someone wrong in the sense the motive of our heart and we have to have our hearts minds bodies and spirits open to him i'm so when he started telling us okay i'm so because i really know it's true he's looking for houses without rooftops that he can pour into to receive of his glory to receive of the heavenly mana that he's teaching us about ourselves the, the things that he said were locked away because the pharisees took them and locked them away y'all there's so much which is why i put i was i didn't put it holy spirit gives me the direction on how i'm to put this together ecclesiastes 1 and 9 y'all the thing that hath been it shall be Everything that was already established from the beginning, it shall be. Nothing changes. The scripture says, thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What are you? You are earth. Heaven is inside of you, literally. We're going to talk more about that, so y'all just hold on. There was a cry out to the body of Christ to understand the truth about the kingdom within. Even though we know we have to walk in the spirit, but there is so much more to this thing. There is an internal ascension that happens. There are internal spiritual things that are literally happening. You might not be able to see it, but there are things literally going on inside of us, y'all. That Father ordained from the very beginning. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Father has already said what is hidden, it shall be revealed. Everything that is covered, it will be made manifest, y'all. So, let's recap what we learned from the last video. So, in the in in part two, we talked about the dreams and the visions or dreams that Father had given about door number nine. He told us to go through door number nine boldly, meaning there could be we need to have undeniable faith. We need to believe and trust in Him, no matter what opposition comes no matter what the circumstances are no matter what kind of warfare the enemy brings up against us for not not only believing the truth when father revealed it to us but doing the work all right we know that holy ashaya is the door okay john 10 and 9 we talked about this scripture in the last video about john 10 and 9 he says he is the door Okay, we must go through him. We talked about dialect. We talked about what that means about movement. The dangling of one's head is talking about the, um, what would it say, the four dimensions of time and space or space and time, which we're going to talk more in depth about that today. Who glory to the Most High Father. Y'all, please, please know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the Holy Spirit is very, very present in this mana we talked about the mansions in father's house which are the dimensions the fractal universe inside of you everything that is on earth is an image of what is in heaven so if there are fractal universes in the universe outside of us there are fractal universes you y-o-u universes inside of you there are dimensions there are doors there are portals in us he has told me specifically where one of them is and i put it in a video the mind is the way gate to heaven he showed me that the stargate was the third ventricle i believe everything father tell me i may not have all the gaps in the understanding the full understanding but he we prophesy in part even all of this, what we're talking about, we prophesy in part. So I cannot begin to tell you every detail. I can only tell you guys what we know, what we're being shown through the Holy Spirit. So I give Father High all the glory for that. Your mind is very important. All right. And right now, as we're talking about the door, Joshua, the cerebellum, that is one of the doors. That is one of the portals. That is one of the access gates into this dimension with Holy Yeshia. He's taking us to another dimension. This is what the crossover was talking about. Crossing over into another spiritual dimension with Holy Ashaya into another level of consciousness. In the last video, we talked about the basket seals, which is Tet number nine. We talked about those basket seals, and it means to give in secrecy. We go into our secret place. We talked about um, Deuteronomy 26 and 2. Y'all. The secret place that he shall put his name upon. Y'all, Joshua. Yeshua. Holy Yeshua. The Messiah. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, man. Y'all, we will come to receive this glorious money. We will come to receive it. And the significance of the number nine. Even furthermore you know beyond the basket the number nine is very significant 
and it has everything to do it is key to creation father how he created this world and everything in it through his mathematics it has everything to do with everything coming full circle and back into a place of unity it has everything to do with what he established in the very beginning okay by his divine mathematics through his thought did you want to say it through his thought through his thought the significance of the womb and how that is not only talking about your literal womb in a woman you have everybody has a womb man and woman has a womb men and women have a womb we're gonna get into it y'all we're gonna get into it but first let's watch this video The letter Tet is shaped like a vessel that contains something good and hides it within. According to tradition, we can envision the Tet as a womb. Now this connects very beautifully with the number of the letter Tet, which is nine. Nine represents the nine months of pregnancy where the fetus is hidden within and is only revealed after receiving its goodness within. The first time that God says that a creation is good is by light. That God saw the light and it was good. And a number of times, additionally, in the story of creation, God relates the world as being good. The letter Tet begins the word Tov, which means goodness. And thus in Kabbalah, the Tet is, is expressed as the letter that hides goodness within it. Thus, Kabbalah expresses the essence of the letter Tet as goodness is hidden within it. In the first verse of the Torah is encoded a name of God. In the first letters of Et HaShemayim, the Et HaOretz, the heavens and the earth. The first letters of those four words spell out a name of God that equals 17. So we see that goodness is hidden in creation from its very inception. The letter Tet being the number nine is once again the idea of birth, but not just physical birth, the idea of spiritual birth, of giving birth to potential, of actualizing potential. Thus, we see a beautiful connection with the number nine in blowing the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. One of the sounds of the shofar, the truah, is made up of nine staccato sounds. The shfarim is made up of three shofar blasts, but they must be elongated for at least three beats, also equaling nine beats. When looking in the holiday prayer book, the machzor, you will see that the sets of blowing the shofar are constructed from series of nines. Now this was deliberate because the sages wanted to allude to us that not only is God recreating the world, but that each person, as it were, is giving birth to themselves again. This is the power and the strength of rebirth and renewal that were given at the beginning of the year to give birth to ourselves again, to connect to our inner potential. The letter Tet is a letter of birth and renewal, of bringing potential to actualization, and a very meaningful meditation would be to focus on all the goodness in the world how much goodness is hidden all around us, how form is hidden in matter, how the soul is hidden in the body, 
and how God is hidden in the world. So, y'all, as you can see, the number nine is very, very important. There was a lot of things that, you know, the number nine is symbolic for. But did you hear him talk about the number nine representing the womb, the place of conception? Okay, y'all, when I, when I keep putting emphasis on something, please take a note. Because in a little bit, it's going to make a whole lot of sense, all right? But... In the last video, in part two, the last journal entry that I left off on was um, this one that you see on the screen was from August the 10th of 2020. There's a few things to point out here, but right now in this particular portion of the, the, the mana that we're talking about, we're going to talk about um, the very last line. She was shown priest Joshua Sampson overseeing us. Now, something to notate for later, the snow flurries, okay? And if you can look at this picture that I have on the screen, this is from part two. I put these images there to kind of give you a, um, like a heads up on something to look at so you can already have an idea of a connection to something. I'm explain something about the snow flurries in a little bit and the transformation. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if we're going to get to it today. Because I, I have to break this in pieces, so I'm going to go into the Holy Spirit leads me to stop. All right? So there's a few things. Just just notate the snow flurries and the water. Okay? We already talked about the water. The water is symbolic for the crossing over. This water, this, the water represents consciousness. All right? <laughs> okay, so I'm going to stop there because I'm going to go into something else. Anyway, we know that Joshua led the Israelites into the promised land, okay? So we've been talking about, we've been learning about, Father has revealed to us that the cerebellum is Joshua with the G, which is symbolic for Joshua with the J. And this Joshua, his name is Joshua, son of Noon. Well, guess what? Noon is the 14th letter in the Hebrew Odeo, okay? But that particular holy letter is the number 50, okay? There's a difference. It's the 14th holy letter, but the, the um, what is the word? The, the numerical value, thank you, Holy Spirit, the numerical value is 50, okay? So before I share what noon is, means and what is symbolic for i need to explain something holy ashaya gave me an audible in february of 2017 i could hear him just like if as if i had headphones on my head i heard him loud and clear like you hear me and i knew it was him beyond the shadow of a doubt i knew it was him at the time i had no idea about the throne being the brain but he said to me his exact words were I give you letters in, I in, numbers, and numbers have value. I knew it was very specific in the wording. So the revelation of that, the interpretation of that has been given to me over the course of time. I understand now this was speaking of the letters literal letters they're not only the numbers and letters are not only interchangeable like alphanumeric but within a number and within a letter there is a message okay letters like a message not just one equals a two equals b so on and so forth but in the letter a or the in the letter the number one there is a message which is what the Hebrew audio is. It is signs, symbols, messages that, and they all connect from beginning to end. Okay, so I wanted to clarify that because this is this is scriptural, it's literal. So get your Bibles. Let's go over to Numbers twenty-seven verses fifteen through twenty, and I'm gonna read them. And it says, "And Moses spake unto the Lord, saying, Let the Lord." the God of the spirit of all flesh said a man over the congregation, which may go out before them, 
which may go in before them, which may lead them out, which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. Verse 18. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take thee, Joshua, son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit, and lay thine hand upon him. Set him before Eleazar the priest, and before all the congregation, and give him charge in their sight. And thou shalt put some of thine honor upon him, that all the congregation of the children of Israel may be obedient. Eleazar means God is my help, or God has helped. So in this dream, priest Joshua Samson was overseeing us. Symbolic for Joshua G, which father himself revealed that Joshua G is the cerebellum, okay, is symbolic. It is another archetype, another type of Christ, okay? Y'all, you hear me? Just as Christ is embodying us on earth now in this end time reign, he did the same thing with Joshua in in, in every archetype in those days, nothing has changed. Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 is the same, y'all. Everything has been done. That which hath been done, it shall be. Who was and is and is to come. It's the same thing, y'all. Okay? This movement in and out of the sheep gate, back and forth. He goes in and out before us. We go in and out before him to find pasture. Okay? John 10 and 9. Through him we receive our power and our strength, which is in a left strength and power. Much power as we're going to another dimension, y'all. Please tell me you understand it, what I'm putting down. You're picking up what I'm putting down, okay? This all falls in with time, but stay with me, okay? The number 50 in the Hebrew audio means seed. And it says, Holy Ashaya. The good seed. So the number 14 is also symbolic for Holy Yeshaya. It means life, perpetuation, which is unstoppable motion. That is so very important. We're going to talk about it here in just a second. Offspring, heir. Okay. We know that Holy Yeshaya sits at the right hand of the throne. And he said he will give to us as well to sit with him on his father's throne. Aleph means headship. It's talking about being yoked to headship, being taught by headship. It is talking about the Most High Father himself, who is the headship of our headship, which is Christ. He is over us. We are yoked to his headship. So once again, we have Dalet. I'm going to keep reiterating this because it, you have to understand what is being spoken. You have to understand what the Holy Spirit is revealing to us. Dalet is number four. Who is, which is the door, which is Holy Yeshaya. This is the movement back and forth in and out of the sheep gate. Okay. John 10 and 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out to find pasture. Y'all, this is so very crucial. So in order for us to gain understanding about Joshua, what we're learning here about Joshua, because we're going to talk more about Joshua here and crossing over, there's more. But all of this is fixing the tie into time, measure, time, space, and thought, okay? Because a thought comes from your mind, okay? Listen, Joshua is symbolic for a few things, but he's symbolic for a type of Christ, symbolic for a doorway as you heard in the scriptures of him going in and out back and forth this is that perpetual motion like holy yeshaya the in and out the access entryway in and out of the sheep gate being able to go in and out from one dimension to another listen to what i'm saying are you picking up what i'm putting down because i'm trying to break it down <laughs> i'm sorry I, I gotta do that because i'm trying to make sure y'all understand what i'm saying so, the cerebellum, Father told us that Joshua G in the body, in your body, in mine, is the cerebellum, which is in your brain, okay? The brain is Father's throne room, it's the seat of Yah, okay? Alright, we already know that, right? 
Dalet is the door, which is Holy Ashaya, the four dimensions of space and time. Okay. In my father's house are many mansions. Okay. John 14 and 3. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. That's him going and coming and taking you, okay? Back and forth, in and out. Stay with me. This doorway inside your brain, y'all, is how we're crossing over into this next level dimension of consciousness this elevation in the spirit with father a higher and it is taking you and me to the next it's taking us to the the next level of ourselves okay you're going to the next level level of you in father a higher into the kingdom within it is in you y'all okay so with me saying that this takes us into the breakdown more on time and space because it's pushing us into understanding the revelation of the bending of time and space. Because some say time is linear. Some say time is curvature. But in researching, you will understand that there is both. Okay, we're going to get into it in a minute. Just hold on because this is so awesome. But before I bring this up, because I'm going to be sharing things that come from Einstein. I'm going to be sharing things that come from Sir Isaac Newton, but what I have to disclaim here, because I'm led to, because Holy Spirit gives me how to write this out. So I'm telling y'all what's already been given to me. I'm using this as an example to express and to give credence to what Father Ahaya had already established in the beginning of all things, which is why I was led to put Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, because what they found does not surpass what Father did in the beginning or what he knows and what he's revealing now. There's nothing new under the sun. Just as each of us prophesy in part, so did he give them instrumental pieces to his creation. They were limited because some of them didn't believe in the Trinity. Some of them did not believe that there was a higher being who could put you in a heaven or a hell. So that automatically cuts you off at some point. There's a limitation. Father won't give access, but he establishes all things for his body. He let them find what he wanted. So that when we, in these days, as it says in the Bible, when the book of Daniel is open, okay, the knowledge is increased. We have places to go and find the things that give edification and credence to what father already spoke what he created what he ordained we finna read it in the scriptures colossians 1 verses 16 through 17 it says and this is from the king james version and i'm gonna tell you when i switch it up from different versions i do this as the holy spirit leads me to okay for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him, all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead that in all things he might have preeminence. We already talked about him being the headship in Aleph, okay? He's the head. He's our head covering. He is the head of the church, okay? The first to be resurrected. It says, verse 19, sorry, I went past um, verse 17. It's actually verses 16 
through 20 that I'm reading. My apologies. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. This is confirmation and this is a, a notation of scripture that you should probably take because it's going to make more sense later about how he's bringing things full circle. The circle is very important. The number nine is very important. 360 is very important. It's connected to Joshua. And he wanted me to point out the particular wording for verse 17 in Colossians 1. Okay, and I'm going to read that from the AMPC version. I'm going to look down in my notes because I wrote it down. It says, And he himself existed before all things, and in thing, uh, excuse me, in him all things consist, cohere, or held together. That's so very important. Mark it, y'all. <laughs> the next scripture, Job chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. It says, But ask now the beast, and they shall teach thee and the fowls of the air, and they shall tell thee, or speak to the earth, and it shall teach thee. And the fishes of the sea shall declare unto thee, Who knoweth not all these, that the hand of the Lord hath wrought this? In whose hand is the soul of every living thing, and the breath of all mankind? Lastly, Psalm 118 and 23, This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. So the scriptures tell us clearly that this is all Father's doing. Okay, so now that we have read the scriptures, we're going to move into this next portion. Because each of these people had a piece of the pie. Okay, so we're going to start out with gravity. All right. So Sir Isaac Newton, his example described gravity as a force, which pulled an object with a smaller mass like an apple. Okay. Closer to an object with a larger mass, let's say, Earth, okay? His example saw gravity as a linear force, a line, okay? Einstein perceived it as a curvature, space-time continuum. Stay with me, y'all, okay? An object with a greater mass causes a distortion of space itself resulting in a smaller object being pushed into an orbit pattern. So we talking about a line and we talking about a curvature, which if something curves is eventually going to meet at a point. Circle and a line, okay? Write it down. We gonna get into the audio in just a minute, but I need to keep going with this gravity so you can understand, like, like I said, they were given instrumental pieces, but all of it is key to understanding the dimensions in space and time. And it's still talking about the keys to the kingdom within, y'all. This is, is awesome. All the glory be to Father higher. So gravity is much like our drawing nigh to the Father. We are that smaller mass or the apple, okay? He's the larger mass or earth, but this is the thing. This is where... You have to understand, our Father is the Father of lights. He is a brilliant light that we cannot look up on. Light has no mass, but it has a force. Hear what I'm saying? Light has a, I mean, has no mass, but it has force, which can pull something. Okay, y'all, stay with me. We are light beings. Internally. Our true self. We are light beings in an earthly body. Okay? So we're light and we're earth. We have mass and we have force. You have linear force. You have the curvature space-time continuum. Okay? This edifies what we're talking about here. What Father's telling us about time and space in the mind. And his Hebrew audio. I'm going to read it to you in just a second. But... Sir Isaac Newton's laws of motion, okay? Number one, objects move, uh, in motion or at rest remain in the same unless acted upon by an external force. Number two, the force acting on an object is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by its acceleration, 
And number three, for every action, there is an equal or opposite reaction. Okay, so we talked about perpetual motion in noon. This back and forth, in and out. This is so deep. Okay, so you got to take this to prayer to receive understanding. I'm only sharing what I was given here. Okay, I just have to pause and say that because as we go more and more into this, I'm pretty sure people, I don't know how people are going to take this, but I give all the glory to Father Ahaya and I just, I urge you to just pray to him. It's all very glorious when you begin to understand this in the spirit and how it's connected in his word. Okay, the Hebrew audio is actually the word. Okay, these are numbers and these are messages that are written and encoded in the Bible. All right, so inertia, perpetual motion, okay? The definition for inertia, a property of matter. Listen, we are matter. Father said we are matter. Just, just hold on a minute. By which it continues in its existing state or rest or uniform motion in a straight line unless that state is changed by an external force. Okay? Einstein's theory of relativity. And as an object approaches the speed of light, the object, the object's mass becomes infinite. As we get closer to the Father, we get closer to our eternal form, y'all. The object's mass becomes infinite as it and so does its energy, is what this is saying. So let's go back over to the Hebrew audio, okay? We're going to the letter Kuf, okay, which has a numerical value of 100. Y'all, I'm about to throw this phone. Look at the screen. As you can see, listen, hallelujah, it has a circle with a line through it. This is symbolic for that linear time and that curvature time and bringing things back full circle and it's talking about the back and forth y'all because time is we're gonna get into it in a minute i don't want to go there but give me a second <laughs> i'm getting ahead of myself all right so it says a cycle as in the modem okay a modem is an appointed time it's, it, it's, it's pointing to Father's holy feast. It's representing his holy feast in the Bible, his festivals. Okay, we know that this comes around every year. Okay, and we have to go through this every year. We have to go through each feast every year in a linear form. It's very symbolic for the way time and space is being revealed to us right now okay it means light growing or diminishing okay so if you take an object if you're there and you take an object and you move it closer that light is going to grow bigger okay if you move the object back further it's going to grow smaller back and forth this is the light growing or diminishing okay time as in a day we're talking about time. We can learn what time and space is, y'all. This in, in in measure and and how this connects to thought. I'm excited about this part, y'all. I'm like, literally, I want to explode. I just want to explode. But oh, thank you, Father. Hi.